Hi guys. So my name is Thomas Bartke, and uh, I'm here for the first time, Kimen as well. Thanks a lot for bringing me over, uh, Sinan. <laughs> awesome. So um, our company does um, uh, international training events for e-commerce entrepreneurs. Who here has uh, to do with e-commerce in their business at all? Show of hands. Do a little bit of market research, so very small crowd. The rest of you are all corporate people? Or who is in uh, internet marketing? Some form or other. Okay, all right, now I need everybody's uh, attention and participation. The big question here is, what do you know about Facebook Pixel? On a scale of one to five, where one is nothing at all, never heard of it, and five is, yeah, I'm pretty familiar, I know exactly what's, what's going on there. Just I want you all to yell out your number, make up your number right now and just yell it out all together all at the same time so I can figure out where, you know, who to cater this presentation to. So between one and five, make up your number and go now. One. One, there's an overwhelming majority, clearly detectable that's a one. I actually have a, a musical background so I, I know to tell from, from the sound of it that that was a clear one, yeah. And so probably you did too. So speaking of market research, I have seven children at home, so I don't really need to go much further than that for my own personal <laughs> market research. Which, which thing do I have to click? To the right. To the right, this one? To the right. Say that, yeah, okay, good. Okay, so 80% so of e-commerce websites use only 20% of the power of the Facebook pixel. So the Facebook pixel, pixel is just kind of a code word for uh, something that um, is tracking uh, behavior, tracking data for your advertising that is running on Facebook, right? And Facebook uh, is obviously a, an extremely important marketing platform, at least for e-commerce and at least for entrepreneurs that are going in there and grabbing a market slice away from the uh, on offline retailers as well as kind of uh, putting a chink in the armor of Amazon by being fast-paced, quick, uh, quick to make changes, quick to go after trends, after new products that come out, put them up on a website, promote them on Facebook, make a million bucks in a couple of months and move on to the next product because we don't have to think too far ahead. But there's more to it than that. Uh, also for your business, when you are in any kind of dimension of online marketing or looking to go into the social media platforms. So what is the pixel used for? Primarily it's tracking and that is the 20%. Most people want to know what happens when people see an ad, when they engage with the ad, with the ad when they click on over, come over to your website and when they then take certain actions on the website that lead them eventually to making a transaction. Okay, so there's the ad, there's the engagement on the ad, then there's the click over to your website, there's a visit to your product page, there's an action like adding a product to the cart or you know, turning it around, looking at some images, and then eventually there's the transaction where you want them to be, where they turn into a customers. So that's great, what, what about the other 80%? The other 80% is really where it's at because the tracking is, is good and great, but it's not as important as the other 80%. And that is list building. It's kind of something like list building. So who here does list building? Who has an email list? Who has a buyer's list in their company? Everybody, yes? So with list building, you can do something that is very interesting. And on Facebook, with the Facebook pixel, you can build a list that is almost as powerful and in some dimension, in some aspects, even more powerful than an email list. And that is you can build audiences. You can build audiences on Facebook that are the people that take certain actions on your website, in your store, in your e-commerce, whatever it is where you're moving people through. Once you have figured out what you want to present them, what you want to move them through in this in this behavioral pattern of becoming aware with your company to interacting, engaging, and then eventually becoming a transactional customer. Uh, so you, you help them uh, move through this, and as you go, you can build these, these audiences on Facebook. So, for example, these audiences can be segmented, right? If you're building the email list, you would never send another, another paid ad to get 
the person to go again to your opt-in page to go build the email list again, right? You would take everybody who's on the email list out from the target audience where you're running your, your direct, your direct uh, ad, ad uh, campaigns, right? Yes? So that you don't waste the ad money twice on people that are already on the list. And that is what you can also do with the audience on Facebook. For example, you can separate the people who have visited your, your website but not taken any specific action further down. And therefore, now you're taking the people who have already taken that action out of that audience that you're still going to need to attract to come to your website in the first place. Right? So now you have a group here, a segment of the audience here that uh, has already visited your website but not taken any specific action. Then you have another group that has taken that specific action but not made a purchase yet, and that is this example. You can also make these conditions for these audience behavioral patterns that are actually happening on your website, on the assets that you can control, more complex, so that you can actually make a very fine chiseled profile of different audience segments that you can then continue to target in different ways. Here's another example, purchased items over $100. So you can make all kinds of criteria and conditions for these segmented audiences that are tailor-made to your business, to the idea that you have for moving your, your audiences through uh, your funnel and through your website. So, in other words, you can segment your audiences by any meaningful actions that visitors take in your store or website. And the money is in the list. You've heard that, of course, applied to emails, but the money is also in the list with these audiences. Uh, Keith mentioned retargeting. Retargeting is awesome. So when you have these lists segmented where you can retarget the people who have added something to the cart but not purchased it in a different way, maybe with a special discount coupon from the people that are your primary cold leads of your ads, that's gonna save you money, that's gonna get you a segment that's gonna be far greater in converting these ads, and it's gonna be awesome. Here's some other examples. You can cross-sell, you can run ads for new releases to the people who have already purchased something, and that can also then lead further down to building a loyal brand follower audience out of those people that take more and more actions. But wait, there's more. Here comes Facebook and here comes big data. Facebook knows more. Facebook knows absolutely everything about their users. All the stuff that you see in, in Tracy's pictures and, and in the presentations before, Facebook has their own little system. Well, it's not a little system, it's a big system, of course, uh, of that, so they use a lot of that. And one thing that they know really well is which users on Facebook are similar. The concept of similarity is huge because it gives you leverage with the audiences that you've collected on your own website. So similarity extends over demographics, buying behaviors, interests, things that people do on Facebook, things that people click on and so forth. So the similar users on Facebook's, on Facebook's system are called lookalike audiences. And here's where the leverage comes in because your audiences are relatively small, right? There are hundreds of users when you start running some ads, there may be thousands of users. Maybe there are ten tens of thousands of users, all right, I'll give you that, depends on the size of your company. But the lookalike audiences are huge. There are millions of users, millions and millions of users. And because of the concept of similarity, Facebook can make that happen, that you give them a smallish audience that you've created tailor-made to exactly what they've done on your website, and they hand you back a huge-ish audience that you can then target and have much better results for that. So we built these things into the Facebook Pixel with special scripts and design, you know, the exact parameters of where you want, how you want to retarget, how you want to track and segment your audiences, and we've done this for some of the e-commerce uh, platforms like Shopify, Magento, WooCommerce, but we can also you know, help you out, give you some more information about that. We, if you're looking to do this in a custom way for your company that's not working on an e-commerce platform. So there you go. There's a little bit more information there, but you can also text me. I would actually 
have that uh, rather than going for you to go to the website. My, my, my text, my cell phone is 214-449-1446. Text me and let me know what exactly you're interested in, okay? Thanks a lot. Thanks for your attention. You got your own. All right, awesome.